Hi, everyone. Uh, so we're ready for our second talk now. Uh, up now, we've got Voitech talking about how you can test uh, iOS applications without jailbreaking them. Hello, guys. Uh, today, I will be talking about testing iOS apps without a jailbreak in 2018. Uh, but before I start, I want to apologize everyone who uh, signed for the previous presentation uh, for Pwning WebView. Uh, unfortunately, Apple was unable to patch these vulnerabilities on time, so I was forced to uh, switch the presentation topic. So if you are still interested in Pwning WebView, uh, stay tuned and uh, follow the, my company's medium. All right. Uh, so who am I? I'm a pen tester uh, currently employed at Securing. I actively uh, try to contribute to OVAS projects and I've created uh, whole Ruby code examples for uh, OWASP security knowledge framework. And I'm a hacker of Apple devices, but I still love them. <laughs> so the Apple fan. And recently I've created uh, info security blog. The link is uh, of course below. Uh, I encourage you to contact, to uh, share uh, this presentation, to, uh, to ping me on Twitter. Uh, so I introduced myself, and now I think it's time to uh, get something uh, of you. So the first, the first question will be, who of you uses Apple devices? All right. And the second question uh, would be, uh, who of you is directly or indirectly involved into conducting penetration tests? All right, thank you. And the third question, the concatenation of the previous two. So who of you is directly or indirectly involved into conducting penetration tests, but on Apple devices? Okay, that's cool. Uh, so the agenda. At first, I'm going to describe the current situation of uh, iOS apps pen test. Uh, then I will talk about something about the current jailbreak situation. Mm. And the next point is pen testing without a jailbreak. And I want this presentation to be repeatable by you. So I've, uh, there is a bullet uh, setting environment and it will, it will show you how to set up your environment in the let's say, most convenient and the easy way. Uh, and then uh, the creme de la creme of this presentation that is the um, pen testing without a jailbreak. And like in every presentation, uh, a summer. And before I start, I want to uh, say that there is no one blessed way how to pen test iOS applications without a jailbreak. So if you have a better solution on how to uh, do this, please contact me. Uh, Let's spread the knowledge, yeah? So the first question is, why we should care in general about iOS? And I've graduated from economical field of study, and you know, uh, money and plots uh, talks very well to me. So the first plot about the market share, and as you can see in 2016, uh, about 13% of people uh, uses uh, iOS on iPhones. And uh, take a notice that, um, of course, uh, there are um, different uh, devices that actually use iOS. But guys, the statistics, you know, uh, talks very well of, about the money, but there may be a better example that talks to me very well. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe this bearing starts, uh, these stats are better. Uh, so, all right. Uh, but do we really need checking iOS app security? Because uh, we hear from every, uh, every place that Apple provides the most secure uh, mobile system in the world. And we have uh, even heard about two years ago about the battle between FBI and F uh, about the Apple uh, between the Apple and FBI uh, when uh, FBI acquired the uh, terror, I, I, terrorist iPhone and Apple refused to 
decrypt this device because Apple claimed that they used random uh, encryption key on every device and they don't store it, yeah? So uh, iOS may be the most secure mobile uh, system in the world, but iOS is not only made by Apple and uh, you have uh, applications on your iPhones or iPads and the developers that um, make applications for App Store may be not as uh, qualified to and know uh, about security. So I have selected uh, three problems uh, that may be interesting from security point of view. And the first problem, uh, or who of you recognizes this logo? Okay, uh, so uh, for those who don't uh, recognize this logo, this is Apache Cordova, uh, previously known as PhoneGap, and this is a framework that allows uh, developers to create uh, multi-platform applications using only uh, web technologies like HTML, JS, and CSS. And here comes the question, how the web, how the application that is uh, coded only using the web, uh, web, web languages, let's say, can interact or uh, how can it get uh, your mobile system resources like uh, accelerometer, camera, network, contacts, and so on, yeah? So uh, there is a bridge that is called JavaScript to Objective-C bridge and you invoke a method uh, in JavaScript and it communicates with uh, natively written code uh, on your device, so uh, the interaction between your mobile resources is possible. But come on, we are from the security, yeah? And when we hear that a JavaScript function may interact with your uh, mobile system, let's say internals, a little bulb should turn on in our minds because uh, let's imagine the situation when attacker can control, for example, the JS file that is loaded from the server and it can, for example, uh, leak all of our contacts or photos and everything that uh, Cordova application has access to, yeah? So that's pretty dangerous. Mm. The second problem is uh, app transport security and this is a mechanism that was introduced by Apple in iOS 9, and uh, the point of implementing such mechanism it was to uh, provide uh, and take care uh, ab about the network communication between your applications and the server. Uh, it takes care, for example, uh, of the TLS, uh, wh whether the, the connection is even secure. Uh, it takes care about the cipher suits, etc. And everyone who uh, has an experience in uh, development knows that, from any different, from very different reasons, uh, endpoints may have problems with implementing, for example, the newest TLS. Yeah, so. Uh, the poorly configured uh, app transport security may lead even to the man in the middle attacks on your applications. And uh, let's show the Afternity's research and quote them that among the top 200 iOS apps that we analyzed, 166, that is 80% bypass at least, some ATS requirements by setting NSRLO arbitrary loads attributed to in the info playlist files, yeah? So, as you can see, a huge amount of application that because of uh, very different reasons was misconfigured in ATS led to, for example, to many in the middle attacks, yeah? And the third problem, uh, the last problem that I selected for you is zipper down, and it's a vulnerability that was discovered, let's say it was discovered in half of the May uh, of this year, and <clears throat> Uh, the point of this vulnerability is to create a zip file uh, that has a file that is a full path, yeah? So when you unpack the zip, you then co they compress the zip file, it can overwrite any file that is uh, included in your application container, yeah? And we have heard about this a long time ago that actually 
I haven't been on this word <laughs> in this time, but uh, on FRAG, you can see uh, a vulnerability found by Inhuman in September 1991, and over here, the quote, you could work from there doing uh, uh, point, point, slash, and so on. So this vulnerability is pretty old, and it's the cool situation, the funny situation when old vulnerabilities uh, come back, yeah? And as you can see, the article, uh, zipper down vulnerability could hit 10% uh, of iOS applications, so yeah, the huge impact, as you can see. So now we are aware that we have to check, but what do we have to check, yeah? And here comes the OWASP mobile ISVS, uh, that is a standard that uh, makes uh, the penetration test and the secure development easier because it's, let's say, a guide, yeah, of security. And now, uh, let's change the atmosphere to the poker game, and we have the two stages, the static analysis, when we only have the cards, we don't look at our opponents, we have just uh, the cards, and the same situation is in the penetration test, when we have our application, we don't install it on uh, the device, we just decompress the IPI file because uh, it's basically a zip file, and we investigate what it has, uh, and etc. And then there is a dynamic analysis, so there is the situation when you did all the math on your cards and you start looking at the opponents, look at their poker faces, and uh, this is the same situation like in uh, dynamic analysis of uh, iOS applications, because you know. And uh, some examples of static analysis, uh, excessive data in application package, uh, binary security, so we check whether the application was compiled with the proper flags, uh, the obfuscation uh, mentioned before, ATS configuration, or iTunes file sharing. And these are only examples, of course, what we have to check, it's not a full list of static analysis, yeah? And uh, dynamic an the dynamic analysis, so the file saved by the application, data in the key, in keychain, yeah? vulnerable UL handlers, so the, let's say they're only blessed by Apple way how to do inter-process communication, the application logs, and you may say, come on, application logs, you, you need to have a physical uh, access to your device, and what's the risk with this? But as you can see, for example, star, star, this is a Starbucks example, and even Independent wrote about this because Starbucks uh, was storing sensitive user, user information uh, right into the logs, yeah? Uh, so the caching, certificate pinning, confidential information in snapshots, and you may say again, come on, snapshot, but for banking applications that may contain sensitive data on your screen, it's really important, yeah? So um, the testing iOS apps without jailbreak, uh, but do you know, guys, what the jailbreak is? Raise a hand, who knows? All right, so the simple definition, the jailbreak is like rooting on Android, so you make your device more powerful, you can uh, interact with, uh, for example, kernel, uh, you can install the app unsigned applications, yeah? So that is uh, the jailbreak. And what do we need a jailbreak for? So usually for dynamic analysis, and yeah, there may be people who, who will claim that yeah, but there are cases that we don't need the jailbreak for, and I will agree with this, because for example, uh, keyboard caching, yeah? With the jailbreak, you just run your script and look uh, what was cached, but uh, without the jailbreak, you must do uh, clear your uh, keyboard cache, open the vulnerable application, input some sensitive data, turn off the application, turn on other application, and start typing and look whether it was cached or not, yeah? but you could not cover without the jailbreak the full uh, things that are mentioned in mobile ISVS, yeah? And the second thing is for static analysis when we don't have the application package, and this is a huge problem because Apple uses their own DRM system called Apple Fair Play, and they encrypt every application uh, package 
with your device key, so you are unable to unpack the application and see the application uh, without the jailbreak, yeah? Mm, all right, and here is the messy table of the jailbreak history, and look at these ranges between the jailbreaks, they are pretty huge. Uh, the devices that are covered are not so uh, big that there are a lot of, uh, there, there are li limited list of devices. And look at the firmware because this is for example jailbreak for iOS 8 and a lot of applications nowadays needs to be run at least at iOS 10.3. And the update, uh, recently it gets better and unfortunately this slide is outdated because a few hours ago there was a guy uh, who uh, completed the jailbreak up to iOS 11.3, uh, but this situation may not happen in the future and we have a lot of, we need to wait a lot of time for uh, the jailbreak. And it could, be, it, it could have been even, even better, but yeah, there are sometimes guys who claim that have a working jailbreak, but they don't publicly disclose it, so we still don't have it, yeah? So guys, I have been talking for about 18 minutes about uh, the problems with jailbreak and I'm a security guy, yeah? And why can just I create the jailbreak for myself, yeah? Here comes the question. And as I said before, the money example <laughs> stuck to me very well. So here is an example, the poster from uh, Zerodium, that is company that actually buys uh, unpublicly disclosed exploits. And for iOS uh, 9, they offered over $1 million for, uh, for working remote jailbreak, yeah? So that may be a reason why uh, the security guys can't uh, just do the jailbreak for ourselves. So now we are aware that we uh, have to jailbreak our devices. So let's start. And then it happens that it's not so easy and we have to take part in, uh, in the lottery, some kind of lottery. And I will show you how it uh, usually works, works. So, the first example. Fail. The jailbreak was on our iOS version but for 32-bit devices, yeah? So we, for example, have an iPhone 8 and the jailbreak was, uh, was mentioned to be installed on iOS 5, on iPhone 5, sorry. And again, and again fail. And why? The jailbreak was exploiting a bug in iPhone 7 driver. And that was a hardware related jailbreak, so we don't have iPhone 7s and we have failed. Again, the jailbreak was uh, from iOS X.3.0, but we have only iOS X.2.9, yeah? So it starts to be boring, yeah? We, we are frustrated, we are irritated because the client doesn't pay for our troubles in jailbreaking, yeah? The client pays, for, uh, pays us to uh, have uh, the pen test successfully conducted, yeah? They, he doesn't care about the problems that we have with jailbreaking, yeah? So we are frustrated, again. All right, and again we have failed because the jailbreak uh, for our iOS is not public as an example that was mentioned before. And the last trial, Again failed, yeah? Why? Again, because the jailbreak was up to iOS uh, E.1.0, but we have only iOS uh, E.1.2. And there is, um, for the, of course, the situation when we, uh, when we have won, we, we, when we have won, but guys, have we actually won? We wasted a lot of time for jailbreaking uh, that clients doesn't pay for, pay for. Uh, the jailbreaks, the iOS version must be upgraded in 
uh, the near future. And as you can see, it's a kind of problematic process, yeah? So, but guys, who are hackers, there is a way. There are guys who actually win the lottery. And this presentation uh, is about a way how to deal with this problem. So, uh, who of you, before I start, uh, knows what the dynamic library, what the dialect is? All right, so I uh, described it in detail. So, dialect is uh, an abbreviation of dynamic library, and it's the same concept like on um, Microsoft Windows, uh, the DLL files or SO files on Linux, yeah? And before we start reading the points, uh, how it works in general. So you have the application, the downloaded application or delivered by client, and the application uses its own binaries, yeah? So you just inject your custom uh, dynamic library into the application, install it on into device, and because this is a dynamic library that is loaded into the application, it has all it has an access to all the things that application does, yeah, and to the old process memory. So you then communicate with this dynamic library and you, you can conduct the successful penetration test. In our example, we will use the Frida dynamic library. So I will show you how it works in details. Uh, the zero with asterisk point, uh, downloading application package and this point has an asterisk because uh, when we do a uh, penetration test, a uh, client usually delivers the IPI file and we have the application package, so we don't have uh, to care about this. But uh, if you, for example, do bug bounty, you, you need to have uh, download it for, our, for yourself from uh, App Store, yeah? So uh, this is not uh, definitely a solution for uh, bug bounties, yeah? And in our case, uh, we will use uh, Etsy application that has bug bounty, so we can use uh, there as, as, as example. And by the way, Etsy is a cool eShop app. So, uh, the first point. I wanted this presentation to be repeatable by you, so I've used the most, let's say, easy and convenient way how, how to set up your environment. Uh, so. Before we start, we have to take care about uh, two things, the embedded mobile provision and the signing certificate. And the embedded mobile provision is a file that, uh, for example, has an information about your app ID name, entitlements that the application has, certificates, uh, provisioned devices, and the second thing, uh, the signing certificate. So every application on iOS uh, needs to be signed, so you need a proper uh, signing certificate. And uh, you can uh, just do it automatically by opening Xcode, creating new empty project, uh, tick this checkbox, the automatically manage signing, uh, press build on your, of course, on your uh, iOS device, and because uh, we are using, in this case, uh, free developer account, I don't want you to buy it for $1990. So the next step is just to trust the application because it, because everyone can uh, create a free developer account, so you, you need another uh, step of validation on your iDevice, yeah? And when we have our environment set, uh, the next point uh, is injecting our custom dialib and a modificate of the executable file. So in theory, it works like you just decompress the IPI file, uh, go to the frameworks, uh, and then you can see uh, the list of frameworks and the dialibs. So you have to place your dynamic library here. Uh, and then, because this is a binary executable file, you have to update the import table uh, I am, for example, using uh, Maho View to, to investigate the Etsy binary file, and they, for example, as you can see, the AWS is free uh, dyna dynamic library is used in this case, yeah? And um, 
there is uh, automation of step two and three. So uh, this example will show you how to automatically uh, do this. So the, injective, the injecting the dilib, repacking the application, and sign the application. And then when you have this uh, done, a little demo, so we need to unzip the repacked and resigned and patched application. So we're unzipping this. We press iOS deploy. After this presentation, I will show you, uh, I will give you a link to the full write-up so we don't have to record this all. All right, and we have to wait as you can see, uh, the Etsy application was installed on our iOS device, and we now need to have uh, for low-level debugger to be attached into uh, the process. So wait a second. Takes a little. All right, so the Etsy application has been run, and now we have to wait for the uh, Frida to be run. Yeah, and the Frida is uh, listening on the uh, IP endpoint that is uh, shown here. And the application, as you can see, is, an, is in a frozen state because we don't want the application to perform any actions before we successfully inject it because we want to, to see what it does at the beginning, yeah? All right, so we have our device prepared and now there are a few ways how to communicate with this Frida dynamic libraries. So you, you can, for example, use objection tool to interact with this. Uh, you can, for example, use needle uh, or directly using Frida or passion fruit that I will be using in this example. So uh, kudos for Chichu and Olivia. And as I said before, I want this presentation to be a discussion. There is no one blessed way excuse me, how to communicate with this application. So if you know any better soft, please contact me or come after the presentation and we can talk about this. And now it's time for a live demo. Pray to the gods that it will work because every live demo is problematic. So now I turn on the QuickTime player. I want you to see the iPhone screen. Can pray. All right, in the first time. That's cool. So the preview of the iPhone screen. Right, the terminal. So iOS deploy, yes, it's bundle, uh, payload. Etsy app, and we want uh, this to be run in debug modes. So again, <coughs> the same process. And as you can see, the Etsy was actually installed on the device. A second, then look at this Python errors. <laughs> All right, and the application is now in the frozen state. So uh, we will be using the passion fruit. Uh, there is uh, a Node.js application uh, and it can be installed uh, using NPM. So let's start, let's copy this URL, open for example Safari, and there is an interface, uh, we have to uh, click on the device and uh, the Frida's gadget will show up here, so we just click on it, the Etsy application should run. And as you can see, it's run. And guys, we are now pen testing 
iOS application without the jailbreak. And I will prove to you that <coughs> all the things that we need to test uh, can be found here. So URL schemes, info playlist, uh, the binaries flags. Uh, for example, I don't know, let's look at the application caches, yeah? So for example, cache DB. And we can see this, yeah? I don't know, now uh, let's check snapshot. This application doesn't say snapshot, so the folder is empty. We can even access the application bundle. As you can see, list all the modules, uh, dump the classes, look at the console logs, do UI dump, oh. Wait for it, it hanged. There are a lot of, that's what I say about live demoing. Hmm. Oh, come on. Oh, something moved. Oh, all right. Uh, so the full UI dump, the storage, so you can investigate the WebKit cookies without the jailbreak, guys. Uh, the user defaults, and now the most secured on every Apple device, the secure container named Keychain. We focus on this, press, and it crashed. Because as I said before, the there are no one blessed way how to do this. Sometimes passion fruit crashes on Keychain, but we are pen testers. We have to handle it somehow, and you can just use another soft, yeah? So, um, come on, PowerPoint. All right, so we have to access the Keychain. Sometimes it crashes, and we can, for example, use objection tool to, to dump the keychain to the file and we will see all the stuff, yeah? The data is here, the, all the attributes, everything that you need. So guys, we have successfully uh, prepared our device to conduct uh, the application pen test without the jailbreak. So let's sum it up. So the first point, uh, jailbreak, as you can uh, see, needs a lot of effort from us. You remember the lottery examples. So we had to find a way how to deal with this problem. So uh, dialep injection makes it possible to perform pen tests of iOS applications. But as, uh, you, know, as you know, every method had uh, causes problems, a little problems. So the first problem is with SSL pinning because uh, in the typical situation when we have a uh, jailed or unjailed broken device, all we need to do in, in let's say, in uh, the huge uh, amount of cases, because I'm of course aware of uh, open SSL uh, certificate pinning, but in the most uh, cases, all we need to do to deal with the certificate pinning is to just install the SSL kill switch tweak, turn the SSL kill, turn the certificate pinning off, and that was all. Uh, on, in, the, in this method, we of course don't have jailbroken device, so we can just uh, install SSL kill switch, and we have to deal with uh, Frida scripts that are not usually work, and we have to spend more time in, uh, for example, uh, turning the SSL pinning off, yeah? And the second problem uh, listed uh, here is uh, how, to how to get the application package, and there is the problem with the Apple uh, fair play system that I uh, described to you before, because the, every application is uh, encrypted with uh, your device key, so without the jailbreak you can just get the application, so, but it's not a problem for penetration testers, but for, uh, bug bounty program attendees, yeah? So uh, I want this presentation to be repeatable by you, so you can try it at home. I'll give you a, a time to do a photo of this QR code. There is a little write-up that summarizes uh, the technical stuff that I showed you. Okay, 
on the is there anyone, anyone who still takes photo okay i think that's all and um, the article before is uh, technical stuff and you if you are looking for a more general uh, write-up about uh, <coughs> securing your mobile applications there is another one again a little time to make photos All right, so uh, the closing question, how guys do you deal with this problem? Uh, contact me, Wojciech Regua. Thank you. <laughs>